I've encountered a lot of people through the years who really struggle with their identity in their work in God. They don't know what it means to be a Christian and also have a secular job, the kind that you go to nine to five that's not in the walls of a church building. A lot of people really wrestle with that. There's a, a wide highway, but there's two big ditches on either side of it when it comes to Christianity and vocation. And a lot of people end up falling into one of those two ditches. On one side, there's workaholism, where work is all you know. It's everything you know. It's all you do. It consumes you. It defines you. It's everything you are. On the other side, there's people that believe that they're not really serving the Lord with all of their heart, soul, mind, and strength because they're not in full-time ministry. They're not a pastor or a missionary or a seminary teacher or something like that. And they struggle with their identity. They struggle with their value because they're not a full-time church worker. frenzy at work. We'd gotten some new work, a lot of jobs, and we needed a lot more people to be helping us. And, and so we were doing interviews all the time, constantly. There was one problem. I was at a low point emotionally at work. Because I had so much favor with the company, because of some of the, the things that the Lord had allowed me to do there, they were asking me to sit in on the interviews. And I was phoning it in. I wasn't taking it seriously. I was just doing the minimum necessary. They still loved me was the awesome thing. But I, they, and they couldn't really tell that I was phoning it in. But I was. I wasn't giving it my all. This particular day at work, I was planning on leaving early to go home and have a date with my wife. We hadn't really gotten to spend a lot of time with each other for a couple of weeks, so I was really looking forward to it, and I was planning on leaving the office that day at 4 o'clock. I got a call from my good friend Draper about noon. He called me to tell me that he'd had a crazy dream about me the night before. I was all ears. He wanted to tell me that the Lord had spoken to him about my job about how much the Lord cares about my job and my company that I was working for. He said that in the dream, it was me, Draper, and Jesus sitting at a Little League baseball game, eating hot dogs, and drinking a Coke. We were sitting in the bleachers, and we were just having a great time. He said that we were just really enjoying each other's company for the longest time, and he said we didn't really say anything. He said, finally, Jesus looked at him, at Draper, and he said, Darren has been hiring people at work lately, and he's not taking it seriously. Tell him to take it seriously. I don't know that the Lord had ever spoken to me that clearly before with such a gentle rebuke. He came to Draper in that dream as a friend. We were enjoying each other's company. It was the most gentle, beautiful rebuke I've ever gotten from the Lord. But it was so clear. I was not taking it seriously and I needed to take it seriously. But there was a problem. I told Draper, we're done with the hiring frenzy. There's no one left to hire. We've, we've already filled all the positions. I don't know what to do. There's not going to be anyone else to hire. How do I take it seriously? I've blown it. I've really screwed this one up, Draper. And then he said the craziest thing to me. He said, Darren, the Lord told me one other thing. He said that you would have an opportunity at 537 today to take it seriously. I said, Draper, that's oddly specific. He's never ever given me a time or a date or anything like that before. And I told him, there's one problem with that, Draper. I said, you're right on about me not taking it seriously. That was so the Lord, but you're wrong about this because I'm not going to be there at 537 today. I'm leaving work at four o'clock to go on a date with Sarah. He said, oh, you'll be there. I said, no, Draper, I won't. He said, yeah, you will. 
<laughs> we went back and forth like that for what felt like five minutes, and neither one of us would budge. But finally, we hung up the phone, and lo and behold, I left at 4 o'clock. On my way home, I got a call from our secretary. In fact, I was almost in our subdivision. I was turning left. I was at the stoplight waiting to turn left into our subdivision. And my secretary called me and she said, Darren, I know that you've got a date that you've been excited about that you plan with Sarah. But both of our bosses are in a meeting with the CEO and they forgot about this interview that they had. And they're too embarrassed to tell the CEO about it. And they want you to come back. Would you mind doing it? I said, I'll be right there. I'm not stupid. <laughs> Regardless of whether or not the Lord told me to do this, I know that when both of your bosses say, please come back and save our skin, you do it. But beyond that, I turned around real fast and I just pondered, Lord, what are you doing? What does this mean? What is this about? I just couldn't believe it. It felt like the most divine setup from the Lord. So I drove back and I walked in the building. I sat down, the guy was waiting rather impatiently and I started the interview process. I started going through all of our questions, but I was in stitches, I was gripped. I thought, Lord, how do I take this seriously? I don't even know. I haven't had enough time to prepare for this. What do I do? I didn't really take Draper seriously. I didn't think it was going to happen today. I asked him all the questions and he just answered them perfectly. He answered them better than any other interviewer, interviewee we had the entire time. But the whole time I was praying and asking the Lord, what do you think about this guy? What do you think? And the more I asked, the more I felt the Lord say, no, don't hire him. That caused a problem for me because I knew he was answering all of the questions perfectly. Eventually my boss got done with his meeting with the CEO and he came down and joined me and I could tell that he was really liking this guy. He felt like he answered all of the questions perfectly. But the more we talked to him, the more I felt a no in my spirit as I prayed about it. I had no idea what I was going to say to my boss. Eventually we got done. My boss walked him out the building since it was already after five o'clock. He had to let him out since everything was locked up. And I just stood gazing out the big plate glass windows we had looking out, thinking, Lord, what have you done? I have no idea what to do here. My boss eventually walked back in the office and I was standing there and he, he walked in and immediately after walking in, he said, Darren, what do you think? And I thought for a second, I don't know how I'm going to tell him any of this. And then I thought, wait a second, what time is it? And I looked down at my watch. It was 5.37. actually told my boss the story. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't get it out. It was just, it was too much for me. Now, years later, I ended up telling him the story and, and he was shocked. I wish, I wish that I had told him the story sooner because one of the things that Draper told me while we were on the phone was he said, Darren, the Lord really wants to change the way your company does business. And that that floored me. That was the most shocking thing of all that he said because it wasn't that the Lord was saying, hey, I need you to fix this so that you can make more money to donate more to the church. He wasn't saying, hey, Darren, I want you to be paying more attention so that you can be a better evangelist. You know, both of those things are good things, but they're not what the Lord said. But the fact that the Lord cared about the way my company did business. That changed a lot for me. And I actually went looking through scripture after this. It changed the way I looked at things. And I saw in the Bible now that the Lord actually cared not about our work so that we could donate money, not about our work so that we could have opportunities to witness. Again, both great things, but he cared about our work because he cared about our work. He cares about the things that we do. When he set Adam and Eve on this planet, spiritual enlightenment wasn't one of the original tasks that God had in mind. 
Teaching people the Bible wasn't one of the original tasks God had in mind. In fact, the original intention behind creation was work. It was doing things. It was subduing and making this planet ours, putting our imprint on God's creation. God has not built any buildings as of yet. Now, Revelation says he's building a new Jerusalem. But as of yet, every building on planet Earth has been built by man's hands. God fashioned and created the universe beyond imagination. But everything we have, it's been because he told us to subdue the earth and make it ours. I wish I could tell you that this brought massive change to our company. I think things changed. Things began, at least as far as I was concerned, things went a lot differently after that in the way that I conducted myself, in the way that I did things at the company. I ended up leaving a few years later because we moved. But it changed me. And not only that, it changed the way I thought about my work. It changed the way I thought about my vocation before the Lord. And I pray, I pray that this story encourages you to change the way maybe you think about your job, about the way that you conduct yourself at work. I pray that it helps give you a new identity in God, in your work, because your work matters to him. It really does. What you do, that thing you make or that thing you design or those people you help, that really matters to God that you do those things. He loves those things. It's why you were put on this earth. And yes, Christian ministry as a vocation, it's a valuable thing. It really is. But it's not any more valuable or inherently more valuable than any of the other things that we do. And I believe it's because as Christians, we're supposed to be Christians. It's our identity. It's who we are. The thing that we do is the thing that we do. And God cares about it, but our identity is supposed to be as a Christian. And we carry that everywhere we go. We're not just Christians at church. We're not just Christians during the noon Bible study that we lead at work. We're Christians everywhere all the time. It should penetrate and permeate everything that we do, everything that we are. That should be our what, why, who, when, and how. So I pray that this story has encouraged you. I pray that this God encounter that I had will inspire you to seek God for your own encounters with him in your work. He really cares about the things that you do, and he really can and will speak to you about your work. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.